Listen back to when he and Candace stole the show back in the day. And the stars of Blackish are giving Raven a sneak peek of her appearance on tonight's episode. It all starts now on The View with Whoopi, Michelle Collins, Joy Behar, Candace Cameron Bure, Raven Simone, and Paula Ferris. Now, let's get things started. There are obvious differences between Democrats and Republicans. What? Mm, Apparently, no. the Huffington Post listed something you may not be aware of. Maybe. Apparently, Democrats are cat people, Republicans are puppy people. <laughs> Democrats don't sleep as well as Republicans, because Republicans sleep better. But Democrats apparently are having more sex, but not as good as the Republicans. <laughs> Anything on here make any sense How to do you? you figure that out? How do you know who's having better sex? Are you like, I mean, are you listening Candace. in through the door? Well, what? <laughs> we know it's Candace good. is having it's great good. sex. <laughs> <laughs> the one I didn't line up with in the right. Republican category that it said Republicans drink Budweiser, Democrats drink Corona. What's wrong with Budweiser? Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong you're, with anything, you're, Paula. You're, so you like Corona? I'm, I'm not a, um, do you drink not beer a big at all, beer. Though? Not a big beer no. person. Uh, you like Beyonce, even. though. I do like Beyonce. Yeah, because that yeah. was on the list here. So that's two things you you, you may be okay. breaking away from okay. the party. Okay. And if it's happening. But all the Republicans <laughs> and all the Democrats all agree that Justin Bieber is toxic. So that's <laughs> well, You know what? Like, that study is that crazy. Is so because, by the way, it was like 52% don't like him. for This study, you know I love a study, but it has to make some sense. This made no sense. It said the Republicans like chocolate ice cream and Democrats like vanilla ice cream. Is that, I mean, are we back? I like vanilla ice cream. Yeah, I, like, I like what happens, though, if you, you like swirl? dogs and is that cats. You're an I yeah, I like <laughs> swirl and I had dogs and cats. So well, you're down with the swirl? That's I am a the, moderate. Okay. Yes, I'm down with the swirl. <laughs> with a little chocolate. What? What? I'm glad that you guys missed. got that like I got it. <laughs> what did I miss? You're down what with did the swirl. I miss? That's okay. all. Oh, vanilla and chocolate, girl. That's it. It's ice cream related. Oh yeah. I love dogs and you know, I mean I love a dog. This study makes no sense. I'm putting my foot down. I hate it. All right. Well, you love this thing. Okay. <laughs> Reality TV could be getting into people's heads, according to scientists. They found that people who watch shows like Real Housewives are keeping up with the Kardashians are more vain and self-absorbed. But they cannot tell if they were that way before they watched the show or whether the shows are affecting their behavior. Uh. What do you think? <laughs> this reality queen... That reality is TV what they TV. call me, America. Um, I love reality TV, and I'm probably a bit of a narcissist. I think anyone in this industry is just a yeah, bit so. Age. No, but I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I find it very relaxing. I like watching the fights of other people, and I don't like to get in my own fights. <laughs> so that's a release for me, is seeing other people hit each other and me at home <laughs> eating and just watching. Um, I don't think this is true, though. I, I feel like everything in this society is making us a narcissist. It's not just reality TV. It's selfies. It's, yes. it's the way we treat each other, even. It's are you sure selfish. that Are you sure that the things that are, that are coming into our society are making us narcissistic, or were we already narcissistic and now we can actually show it's it? It's amplifying I it. think that humans are already narcissistic because we put human... Um, characteristics on things that don't even like dressing a dog like yeah. dressing a dog like, like I don't like someone should explain to me <laughs> he's cold why I, I'll get him a coat <laughs> I'm okay with I get some boots but I don't understand an outfit that matches yours why I don't know why dress. is the dog don't wearing a Gucci jacket I don't dress on my full velvet coat. You know me. I, I want a dog in a full suit. Like when they figured out how to make <laughs> pants for horses, I was like, tell me everything. I need to know. I love animals in clothes. Pants. I, my Rottweiler was so mad. We dressed him up once for Halloween. Yeah. And we put the hot dog costume on. And he was so mad. I was like, never again. Yeah, I promise. Because he doesn't but understand don't... what Halloween is. Yeah, He's like, no. what is this? <laughs> what? No. This is not my head down here. This is not my... I can't get it. 
<laughs> you know, it's very agitating for them. Anyway, you know, people who are writing up their wills are going to have to include something <clears throat> new, a new asset. Who is going to take over your social media account after you croak? This is real. It this is, is real, people. People, people real. are, you know, there are fights about this. But why do you want, why do you want your social media account to continue if you're dead? Okay, there's That's some... That's what I want to hope you don't. I, there's I don't. some things about it, though. Some people make money off of their social media. Some people make monetary value off of it, and it could keep up, and those assets go right to the next person in your will. Imagine, and like, the go how much the ghosts will make. Like, if you're <laughs> tweeting about brands after you've died, it's like, oh, my God, the money's just going to roll you, in. Not, you, only does your, not only does your social media and your Facebook account go to it, goes to the person in your will, but it's also the music that you've bought. It's also the different movies that you bought. That is tangible in a sense it's not you know a dvd case do, who do you trust who would you trust to take over your social media well, accounts whatever happens my mom is going to fight anybody because my mama don't play around she's not going to let anybody just touch my social she's going to you know she already helped me get but to the followers that i have now mm -hmm. surprisingly if you tweeted me you tweeted my mama would you want someone if you weren't alive would you want someone posting in your name though you're um, dead. You don't care. I know, right? I mean, it to keep up appearance. I'm just playing. I don't know. <laughs> the only thing I would want for it is to pass along my followers to my children. <laughs> cool. That's funny. I'm, that's that's really, interesting. But please don't tweet for me if I'm dead. I just, there's no reason. It's like, oh my God, well, Candace loves Obama. That is so wild. <laughs> what happened? You're going to take it. I know. <laughs> No, you know, it's a, here's something I do that's, I think it is weird to keep up, like, the Twitter and the Instagram after right. you've gone, but I do think there is something to Facebook, because Facebook has your albums on it, that's has true. pictures, and I think if family or friends want to go back and look at, I don't know, at memories and stuff, I do think there's something kind of nice about that. I, don't, I do a very weird thing. It's, it's morbid, but I do it. If I ever see on the news um, that someone's passed mm -hmm. it, uh, tragically young, or someone who's, let's say, living in New York, I always look on Facebook to see if I have, like, mutual friends. Does anyone else do this? I know that I'm a weird... No. You do, I, right? Yeah. I look up strangers, and I see, who do I know who knows that person? Mm -hmm. Because, in a weird way, it connects me. I don't know. I, I right. want to know, is anyone affected by this? I, yeah. It's it's dark, but... Um, no, no, it's your empathy. I don't know. It's, it's that empathic part of you that's doing that, to see if you can, if you, someone needs some comfort. You're checking to see if it's... It becomes a circular world. I mean, listen, as crazy as we think of Graceland as being, it's an amazing place because people who love Elvis and who love what he did can go there and be part of the Elvis tapestry. I wish they and kept I think Neverland, too. I, I wish I'm, they kept Neverland. I'm very sorry they did not keep mm, Neverland as well because that. That, was, that was another place. But that's what Disneyland is. You know, Walt, people go and they participate in a dream that Walt Disney had. So it's a great thing, you know. I don't know. You know, it's not the same as social media, but that is the new social media, isn't it? So that, how smart did I just get? We'll be right back with more Hot Topics. What are your dating deal breakers? The ladies are split on this one, and it could lead to Mortal Kombat later. The views Hot Topics are getting hot, hot, hot. Hello? And just wait till you see what we do next. Wait, wait, ding the bell for me. Thank you. Yeah. Smart, funny, fearless. The place to be heard is The View. Yay! It's The View on ABC. Magazine. Listed ways your siblings affect your health. They're your earliest teachers, if they're older than you. They shape your character, and they can boost your happiness. Now, we all have siblings, and do we find that that is the case? I do. I mean, I do. I, I, my brother's not with me anymore, and I miss him tell because he made me laugh. He's funny as hell, much funnier than me. That's and what I say I, about yeah, my brother. I, you and your brother are equal funny. We're your both brother's sad. dry. My brother is dry. Dry. And it's, it's borderline, you can't say that in public. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he's awesome in that yeah. sense. But we both have depression. We both make each other laugh. And when there's that moment of just, you know what, I need someone to take care of me or, or call me out on my mm -hmm. issues. Or somebody who gets me. Somebody who gets yeah, me and yeah. also doesn't like, like my, my mom and dad do that, okay, whatever. Yeah. But my brother does it in a way I'm like, you right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And my he's the one who gave not, me you right. My brother's not funny at all. Uh, he just isn't, but he, and he's a Republican, which is, surprises a lot <laughs> of people. Some of the Republicans are funny, no, Michelle. He laughs at me, though, so he has yeah. a sense of so humor, you know. But it's funny, like, I think 
we had a lot of disagreements growing up, and I do think he has shaped me. I'm happy that we grew up together. He's seven years older, too, so there is that kind yeah, of a difference yeah, yeah. between us. But it's funny, because once I got this job, which is, you know, obviously my family's so excited for me, he's been so supportive. I'd say this last year, we've grown as close as we've awesome. ever been. Nice. And, and I supportive even of his crazy political ways. Like, it's kind of <laughs> funny. We've really grown closer, and yeah. it's been really nice. I'm the youngest of four, and I will say, like, my brother, it's, um, I have two older sisters, and then my brother and I, and I, one of, one of the, um, ways that they say siblings can affect health is they may save your marriage. And my brother got in my face, but I realized a lot of the issues that I had with, with him were the same issues that I had with my husband. Like, I, I found out that I can be a little too controlling and that I, I wanted to change people, and he helped me to realize that and helped me to be a better person and that I can't change the other person. I can only change myself. So in many ways, I credit my brother for helping yeah. to save my marriage when we were in a lot of trouble early on. That's so great. thank you, Dan. I yeah. love you. Well, same thing. I same experience. I'm close to my two sisters and my brother. My brother really uh, helped ch shape my character oh, in the sense that, you. you know, he was one of the first people to, to share his faith with me and, and, and with my siblings and my mom and dad. And we're, we're all Christian now but we weren't all Christians at the same time and we came to faith at different years in our lives but that was a big influence and then and then one of them says that your siblings can just boost your happiness and my sisters man they just make me happy I yeah. just love being around them there's just nobody I would rather talk real issues with and real life with that get me that I'm comfortable with and you know it's a sacred space and you know it's you can just say anything your and it's not gonna Melissa go anywhere. is my fave she's awesome, she right? has the best laugh when she's here I'm always like oh Melissa is here. She's the most <laughs> sweetest, wonderful. But really, so love that you're I, not, love really. the, I love the story that you tell, though, about your brother coming and making you even smile after he's already passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it just, it travels throughout. Yeah. I mean, he was, you know, he, he was six years older than me. Mm -hmm. And my brother was always my big brother. Like, mm -hmm. in the old days, he would take a crate, you know, one of those wooden crates, mm -hmm. and he'd get a piece of wood, and he'd tap the, you know, put it together with the crate, and I would sit inside the crate like this, Aww. and he would be like this, and he would take me, you know, and it was a scooter, it was our scooter. That's amazing. And he would take me everywhere, and people would say, why are you bringing her? He said, because that's my sister. Aww. And so I, you know, and he never, you know, he pissed me off a lot, I pissed him off a lot, <laughs> but we never ever lost each other. And if you have siblings and you haven't spoken to them because there's something blocking you, unblock. Because let me tell you, nobody knows you better than they do. Nobody knows you like they do. And when they're gone, you will miss them. Make the connection today if you can. We'll be right back. Hey guys, John Cena here. You know there's a lot more to me than being a WWE superstar. I'm a deep, emotional, philosophical guy who can debate topics reasonably. And I know the hosts are probably going to disagree with me. It's okay. Because if they do, they're going down! It's on, ladies! Superstar John Cena has been showing off his acting chops lately on the big screen. He's celebrating our country's heroes on his new show, American Grit, and he's hitting the hot topics table right now. Please welcome the very fabulous and very good looking John Cena. <laughs> much noise I know that I really soon after that have to fight someone yes yeah but so you pay for us on that thing just know I look weaker than I am I'm, I'm, I'm backing down, I'm backing down. So she's got gas that'll knock you out I'm telling you she talks about it all the time you right you for right. those of you who didn't know that was John's signature walkout song time is now and that was him rapping y'all yeah, yeah. And, and for those who didn't know that was done a long time ago uh, hip-hop music is a young man's game and I'm more of just a relaxing sort of lounge singer type of guy say that to Jay-Z you have a great voice by the way uh, I I okay we're off to a great start <laughs> and we got a great crowd here tonight yeah 
You're so good at riling them up. I'm learning so much well, already. They're honestly. already riled up. They're just excited to be here and want to <laughs> want to show us their energy. That's so true. thank, well, but thank you guys for the introduction. Well, let's start with this: a relationship website. Yeah, let's start some hot topics. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, this play, this thing is called Your Tango, and they asked women the hobbies men have that are deal breakers. Uh -huh. So I don't understand some of the top answers that. There were deal breakers, deal breakers for them were too many video games, being obsessed with cars, and gambling. All the stuff I'm into. <laughs> That's why I can't have a woman. That's just why I have to stick with guys. What do you think? Are there deal breakers for you? I, I think it's just rapport between people in a relationship. I mean, everybody has hobbies. I'm a car enthusiast myself, but it's not like I put automobiles over the person that I love. Right. I think I think when it becomes when you build a relationship where you're in the dating scene. If you have a hobby and it's to the obsessive point of you put it over the person you're trying to build a relationship with, mm -hmm. then it gets a little bit weird. So right. I think it could be anything. Like I know taxidermy was on the list, oh, but yeah. like if, if you're a taxidermist, well, well, maybe you need to find someone that's into the same hobby as it you could are. Because I would love to be like, I have my hobby. This is my life. Because that's some people's livelihood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'd then love you to meet a taxidermist, John. Honestly, it's <laughs> hard when that's your hobby. <laughs> I don't do that. They have great attention but to detail. They sure do. do. They love animals. I had a, a boyfriend, and he was obsessed with Mortal Kombat. Do you remember Mortal that? Kombat. <laughs> I'm you, sorry, did I just like, do that? I'm mess with you. Because that is the best. Worst of all, don't be mad at him. Mortal Kombat is one well, of the best games ever created in the history of the world. No, 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 no. He would take me on a date to the arcade. I like And then play the game incessantly. You married somebody else. I did. That's really? A, Kids out there watching, the arcade is a building where they used to have <laughs> Right. Now Nowadays, you just play them at home or on your mobile right. device. That's right. Okay, John, you've been in a relationship for the past four years. Go together as people, you kind of know each other. You had mentioned yourself that you can't change the other person. You just have to kind of grow with them. Um, I think my views on marriage are just me being stubborn and not willing to grow. And, and day by day, uh, I, I'm, I'm changing my perspective on that. Uh, as far as children are concerned, the reason that... Um, uh, the past three days of my life, I've woken up at 5.30 a.m. and I hit the pillow at about midnight. And that has nothing to do with recreational behavior. It is completely business. I'm a very driven individual. I have the luxury of loving what I do. And if you have a child, I want to father my child. And I know that I travel 240 days a year. I, I, it's, I'm in a very rare case of saying I've never worked a day in my life because I absolutely love my work. I, yes. I, won't, I won't let anybody, oh, the, the travel stinks or this. No, I get to be a superhero. Yes. And I know that that window is very small and I know that it will come to an end. But I don't want to bring a child into this world and have another group of people responsible for raising the child. I want to be a father to my child. And at this point in my life, there is no feasible way. Everybody does it in their time. Yes. And you have you to just, be ready to do it. You just have to have perspective. Yeah. It sounds like a great idea, but then not being able to be there for your child this is a is bad true. idea. This, this is true. something you talk about on your show all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And these are conversations that real folks have. Sure, they're tough, but that's why it's hot topics. I yeah. guess so. Oh, we'll be right back. <laughs> You won't get the full view until you see it live in our audience. Welcome to the view, y'all! There's a whole other show happening during the commercials, so go to our website for tickets now. We're back with John Cena, and that was a clip from Trainwreck. And let me explain why Candace and I have changed clothes, because in a bit, we're going to do some American Grit Challenge. Yeah, it's it's going to be awesome, but first, my favorite, rapid fire. As fast as you can. Ready? Yep. Your hero. My mom, she raised five kids. Twitter, Instagram. Uh, at John Cena, Instagram, and Instagram. New, Instagram's good. In New York or L.A.? New York, of course. Favorite thing on... Favorite thing, favorite thing to splurge on? Uh, ben and Jerry's ice cream. Favorite type of pizza? Uh, everything on it. Last show you binge-watched? Right now, it's One cute. superpower, what would it be? Once, uh, invisibility. Favorite movie? Oh, I can't choose one. Calling or texting? Texting. Where would your last vacation be? I, I haven't had a vacation in forever, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> Nicole, I'd like you to take you to Napa Valley. We need a vacation. That's cute. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Uh, I'm an all day. I, I have to do everything. <laughs> Favorite alcoholic beverage? Uh, red wine. Favorite sports team? Uh, I can't answer because I'll get killed by this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite reality show? Total Deepest. Favorite cuss word? Uh, Say it. Not applicable for this program. No! Gentlemen. So for the, for the sake of the program, I will use bologna fudge and mustard. There you go. <laughs>
<laughs> You've become quite an actor um, alongside Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and sisters, but your role as Amy Schumer's bodyguard in Trainwreck got the most attention. I mean, I love that you are an actor. I mean, on all of your other movies that I've seen as well, because I know you're... Thank uh, you. I appreciate it. My but brother gets me into it. I think sometimes people forget that, uh, you know, we... I'm on an episodic television show with WWE, and we, we do have a sense of showmanship to that. And a lot of sometimes when you get on a television show for a certain amount of time, people know you as that and only that and don't think you're capable of anything else. Preach. Mm. So I just, I was, I was fortunate enough to get a unique opportunity. I took it. It involved a little bit of risk, but I, I had a lot of fun doing it. I'm glad a lot of people, made a lot of people laugh. We're so excited about your new show, American Thanks. Grit. So um, you are the host. You're also... Yes, I get the host. Yes, you're also the executive producer, but like when people think physical challenges, they think of Survivor, they think of American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. So how does it differentiate, I think you differentiate watch shows itself? Like that and go, wow, how do they do that? If you see what's going on right here, these are teams functioning as a unit, and the uh, the goal of this challenge is for their log not to hit the ground. And right here, you'll see teams repelling off of an enormous bridge. I see a group Basically, crying. Is yes, what I see. because it's an exercise in facing your fears that has nothing to do with how high you can jump or how fast you can run. So this show basically <laughs> takes you through a journey of spirit, mind, and body. I need it, to be on the show. It, it oh really my gosh, is cool. I need and the to great thing there. is, these civilians are led by decorated military heroes. Wow. So I get to oh, wow. host, but I am not the star of the show. Our military heroes are because they have so much knowledge of how to take people and get them to face their fears so they never give up. And you're also doing something on Twitter with the hashtag show your grit. And so I, what's I that believe, about? Uh, there's there's a, an old saying that uh, be wary of everyone you meet on the street is going through a struggle you know nothing about. Social networks are great in the vein that we can all connect with each other. Yeah. So uh, there are some people posting some fitness goals. There's a young man who just got a black belt, a uh, person jumping out of a plane for the first oh, time. Yeah. I've had people recovering from injuries. That's a photo of a tough mutter. Uh, right there is somebody oh, who's defeating yes. cancer. Everybody has a struggle, so we're using the hashtag show your grit to basically show what drives you. I posted a picture of myself and a sergeant from the Army, Sergeant Davin Dumar, who was an amputee, he was hit by an IED. Now, in the military, when you're injured in combat, and our, our military will attest to this, you're given a purple heart. That is what you are given for your injury. Uh, I met Sergeant Davin Dumar in Detroit, and he gave me his purple heart. Oh, wow. And uh, I have it, and uh, I, I couldn't believe that someone would give me that because it was what he was given. Like, hey, thank you for losing a limb or worse for your country here. And he said, you inspired me, so I wanna give you this just to show you how much you inspired me. Awesome. So a man like that is an inspiration to me. So I'll use the hashtag, yes. show your grit, and let the world know about Sergeant Davin Dumas. So I encourage everybody out there, for whatever it is, whatever drives you, whoever inspires you, could be a teacher, coach, a parent, a friend, it could be an accomplishment if you're studying to, to pass a class or whatever. Hashtag show your grit. I'll throw it on my social. I'll retweet it out to the We have a class. Okay, now you are about to put me and Raven through a view grit challenge. What have you got for us? I got a few boxes that you're going to have to navigate up and over. A balance beam suspended high above the sky that you're going to have to walk. And you are going to have to army crawl under the barricade you see and race to the bell. So just once through? Uh, now once through, come on. I'll tell you what, we'll go the up and back. Once through, come on back. Oh, First person to the bell is going to win. That's what I learned from my trader. Don't ask the question because he's going to add it on okay. later. Are you guys ready to see this? Yes. we got some really good sports in the house. Come on, here we go. Are you guys ready? Hold on. It'll be one, two, three, go, okay? Yeah. One, two, go three, ahead. go. Over the boxes. Through the beam. There's the army crawl. What's up, everybody? Okay, guys, so check this out. I have been in show business for 35 years. That's a long time. And I have never been on The View. It's crazy, right? I mean, all I can say wait, about wait, that... Wait, Don't tell me. Let me guess. No! How did she know I was going to say that? Yes. How did you know that? You... 
Since we were just kids, he grew up from the most adorable child star to teen heartthrob to leading man, whose latest work is the new inspiring movie called uh, Saved by Grace. Please welcome Joey Lawrence. Forever. forever. I mean, forever. forever. We even co-hosted the Kids' Choice Awards way yes, back we did. in the day. There's Yo. a picture right there. Oh, oh my gosh. We are looking good. I still good. have that red jacket. Yeah, I do. I still have I still it now. have that striped vest. Really? We I should, do. Next time I'm on, we're, we're going to wear it. We'll do a throwback we'll picture, and we'll throwback. side by side throwback it. 90s. Okay. It's, it's, okay. it's all about the 90s anyway, again, so. I know. All right, it's crazy. We're glad. Speaking, crazy. Of, speaking of childhood, you grew up yes. with two brothers. They're Matthew and Andrew. Now, you're the father of two girls. Right. I have two girls. Charlie and Liberty, they're nine and six. So nine what's, six, okay, yeah. so you grew up with, with brothers, now you have all girls. All what's girls. the day like in the house? It's just a lot of crying, you know, and um, <laughs> a lot of talking, just a lot of talking. They talk about things, they don't forget anything. I mean, it's truly amazing. Women, men, we are so different, you know, and, and that's a beautiful thing, but they are, I mean, they, they, they talk about stuff from four or five years ago, like it happened two minutes ago. Yeah. And uh, I actually fell asleep at the, at the uh, table one night. No joke. I, I, my mom was over. My wife was there. The girls, they were all talking. I literally passed out. I, I, Are I, you telling them to, like, get to the point? Yeah, get to the point. Guys, That's what I hear from guys, my boys. Yeah, my you know, get to the point. Do you know what Libby did to me, Dad? I'm like, what? What did she do to you? Do you remember when she was... I was like, honey, she's, that was five years ago. She yeah. was one. Right. We hold no grudges. We hold forever, grudges. Forever, forever. And it's a beautiful thing, but I'm like an emotional referee in my house. I'm just trying to just trying yeah. to pacify everybody, you know? Well, speaking of kids, you yeah. actually got started in this business when you were only five years old. Yes. And you were on the Johnny Carson yes. show. You uh, performed with Sammy Davis Jr. I did. I tap danced with Sammy and Bob Hope. And, and you tap danced with Bob Hope. I think we have a clip of that, actually. You have a clip yeah, of the Bob Hope stuff? Really? We do. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Do I know how to dance? Of course I know how to dance. Well, let's cut it. Why not? Go. People? Do you remember like oh, Sammy absolutely. Davis? Of course, of course, because I had to learn the routine that Sammy and I did on Give Me a Break. I mean, it was amazing. And, and we had Milton Burl on the show and George Burns. I went to Vegas and did a comedy routine with George Burns, and I have the cigar that he gave me. I have Sammy's hat. I mean, it's I mean it's wow. crazy. It's, it's awesome. You know, you begin at five years old and you're blessed enough to do this for I mean, I'll be 40 in three weeks, right? So you look good. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're turning 40. So you do it 30, uh, 40, right? It's crazy. Wow. I know. I know. What is it? <laughs> You haven't changed either, Whoopi. Come on now, you haven't changed. You look no, the same as you didn't go. You see me from behind. No, you'll know the no, changes. No. Yeah. It's all about your face, though. It's wonderful to be able to look and see where you came from yes. and be able to talk about the artistry. It's because all about the journey. You had to be an artist. You had to be an artist. You, did. you had to know your stuff. You couldn't just, you know, you couldn't just get up and tap dance. You couldn't just no. get up and go sing. You had to know what you were doing. Well, these guys would not want to dance they don't have time. or sing with you. They don't have time. At it table reads, if you didn't know your lines, your lines were oh, cut. Yeah. I mean, your lines were yeah. cut. It was yeah. as simple as that. I'll never that's forget. It. I used to watch Nell because she used to rehearse for her shows in no. Vegas and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And that's where all... I mean, I love music. That's why yeah. I did music. But watching Nell, yeah. she took me to a Luther Vandross rehearsal in yes. 1984. Yes. Like, when Luther just started to blow up. Right. It was crazy. I mean, I got to go to Vegas with her and watch her shows. She inspired me so much. Her and the Pointer Sisters. Yeah. Watching yeah. those people. I was yeah. like five, six, seven years uh, old. Yeah. That inspired me. I mean, that's why I I still do music to this day. You know, I'm gonna have a new record out thing. next year too. Yes. First time. Before we talk about your movie, yeah. he was singing a little bit before. Before we talk about your yeah. movie, let's talk about your acting career just a little bit more. Okay. You've done five movies this past year. I mean, that's it's, spectacular. Well, it's been pretty cool. You know, we wrapped Melissa and, and Joey last year we, after five and a half years, and I said to my team, I said, I haven't done movies really. I did like two movies. You know, mm -hmm. so I said, let's go out there, and we found some five very different little indie movies, and uh, you, we did it. Can so. you talk about Saved by Grace? Saved and tell by, us what's that? Yes, yeah, Saved by Grace, uh, which is out now. It's on VOD and Walmart. Martin, all those places. Um, it's, it's actually, I read it. It was from Skip Stone Pictures. They sent me the script. It's a, it's a two-hander. It's a spiritual movie. It's, it, it's, you know, it's not unlike War Room and Miracles from Heaven. These speak to a lot of people, but it's not preachy. And, and, and I love that. It's more of a spiritual journey about two people over an eight-hour time period on Thanksgiving. And um, I don't know, man. It was a great script, and I think it turned out to be a pretty good little movie. Let's so. see a clip. Okay, cool. <laughs> You're coming back. Uh-huh. 
to ABC's Blackish. You're on tonight. I am. We have the fabulous children from Blackish. They wanted to be here. They wanted to bring the clip, and they did. <laughs> Please welcome the children from Blackish Marcus Scribner, Yara Shahidi, Miles Brown, and Marseille Martin. brought a little sneak peek from tonight's episode oh. with Raven what? in it. I'm so excited. <laughs> Miles, I heard that you have uh, the nickname Party Time. Yes. How did you earn that moniker? Um, well, we're filming one of our um, episodes of Blackish, and and this was a long time ago. This is early season one, so and uh, and uh, and uh, I was just like I'm, I'm all, I was always dancing around, like just dancing all over the place and just having a really fun time. But people don't know that's how your career started. Yeah, I mean, you, you were given a dancer. Yeah, yeah. Can you show us what party time looks like? All right, let's no. go. Kids from Blackish, y'all have to come back. Raven's episode airs tonight at 9.30 p.m. right here on Ah, Bet, Set. We want y'all to have a great day and take a little time to enjoy whatever view you happen upon. Yeah.